It's considered crass to try and put a dollar value on a human life, and I'm nothing if not crass, so let's get to it. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Odd, and this is Right Angle. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, there was a uh, report I saw this week from the Florida Chamber of Commerce. And believe me, I don't read a whole lot of their material. I can't quite figure out how this came across my desk. But they put a dollar value, not on human lives, but on the lost income of other states from all the people who have uh, been fleeing to Florida over the last few years. And the numbers they looked at just covered 12 months, just uh, from July of 2021 through the end of June of 2022, in which you know a trend that had been going on for quite a while accelerated thanks to COVID in Florida, stopping the lockdown sooner than most other states and, and the anti-CRT stuff and all the rest. And I'm kind of shocked. Um, Florida has gained income to the tune of almost $40 billion in just those 12 months. Now, of course, Florida doesn't have a state income tax, so people get to keep all of that income, which is a big impetus for for moving there. But just five states, just five states represented more than half of that $40 billion to the tune of 23 billion big ones. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to share these states with you. Uh, Pennsylvania came in last out of the big 5, 1.9 billion dollars in taxable revenue picked up and left Scott's old home state. California coming in for 3.5 billion dollars worth of lost income that Sacramento will never get their hands on again. New Jersey 3.8 billion, Illinois 3.9 billion, and get this, New York state lost residents with incomes totaling $9.8 billion. Um, Scott, as somebody who's fled one of these high-tax states, uh, in your case down to Texas, uh, does any of this surprise you except for maybe the, the sheer size of these numbers? Well, I'm, I moved to Texas from Pennsylvania. I get it. Uh, the only reason I didn't move to Florida is because I can't stand the humidity. Um, Amen. Oh, <laughs> so. But, I mean, look at that group. You know, you've got basically the the power blue top five. Um, you've got those places where Democrats are most dominant. I don't know if Pennsylvania qualifies, uh, but certainly the other four do. Um, and Pennsylvania could make a strong argument uh, for its case. And, you know, for years, people have been snowbirds from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. And they have gone down in the winter to Florida so that they could enjoy the nice weather, especially when you get older. And then they come back and they live the rest of the year in the, <coughs> in the moderate temperatures of, uh, of that mid-Atlantic region. Uh, but now they're they're like you know what uh, why would you stay I mean it's it's kind of like the governors and the legislatures of these states are saying to these people who have managed to make a life for themselves and make a good living uh, the beatings will continue until morale improves <laughs> and the people yeah. say you know I'd rather to go where there are no beatings. Um, and Texas has certainly been <laughs> it's so a, simple a when you put it yeah. like that. Who could, have, who could have predicted such well, a thing? And I'll tell you that a lot of people coming to Texas, even though it's a big <laughs> thing in the news, and you do hear people talk about it from time to time, they're not prim- primarily talking about political issues. They're talking about a way of life, uh, a, a, an opportunity zone, if you will. So when they leave California and come to Texas, they just can't wait to get to a place where you can exert your your efforts to the best of your abilities and be rewarded according to those abilities and that the government won't then take uh, you know an extra chunk out of your income that's already being hammered by the federal government um, so uh, you know Texas also doesn't have a state income tax which is like the coolest thing when you move here because it's a real pain in the neck to do that second tax return when you live in Pennsylvania <laughs> um, and so, this, you know, this doesn't surprise me at all. Um, it's a little bit of a flex, I think, on, on, on the Florida Chamber of Commerce's part to basically oh, say, yeah. hey, look at this. Uh, but they're right. And, uh, and then there's kind of a self-fulfilling um, momentum-building process at work here because that flywheel, once it starts to spin and once people find out and start talking to their relatives who have moved to Florida or to Texas and find out that, oh, are you telling me it's actually a nice place to live too? And the people are, are polite and, you know, and you've got great opportunities there. And it's, uh, you know, in my opinion anyway, despite what they say about triple-digit weather being some sort of painful, excruciating thing to go through, I think, I feel like I live in a resort community every day. I just walked out uh, 
in between when we were shooting episodes here to bring my trash cans in. And I walked out in bare feet. And you can do that for upwards of 30 seconds on the pavement in a, in a, on a day like <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> You can do it on cement, but try it on asphalt. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, in, in no. Pennsylvania, I learned that growing up in Missouri. Yeah. Ugh. In Pennsylvania, they had a lot of asphalt. Now, you don't see a lot of that out here in, in Texas. They, your asphalt will, will, will burn your yeah, feet off in that asphalt kind Asphalt of is a soup yeah. out here if they would try to use that. But in any case, I, I think that's a. It's it's good to let people know what the difference really is. And again, you know, yes, there are people who come here and say, oh, I just couldn't stand the political climate of California or whatever like that. But most of the people are just like, you know what? Texas is a great place to live. It's a great place to get a get a job. It's a tech hub like in the greater Dallas area near where I live. T technology companies have flocked here. You know, a couple of years ago, Toyota moved their North American headquarters after 52 years of being in Flor in California. They moved it uh, to R North Dallas. And uh, they are enjoying the prosperity that the rest of us enjoy in uh, in the Dallas area. And so, you know, we welcome it's every time somebody at the store tells me that they've moved here from California. Um, I always tell them, welcome to the United States of America. It's good to have you. I hope you enjoy yeah. Texas half as much as I do. Indeed. Um, Bill, Scott brought this up, kind of kind of uh, glanced across it. The four of these five states, uh, New York, Illinois, New Jersey, and California, are totally dominated by Democrats, and Pennsylvania is increasingly dominated by Democrats at the, at the state level. Um, you know, one of the reasons you become a Democrat is you love spending other people's money. You love telling other people what to do. I mean, that's, that's really the thrill of being a, a, an elected Democrat. Um, at what point are they going to go, hey, we're running out of other people's money to spend, and hell, we're running out of other people. <laughs> never. That will never happen. As long as these states are governed by uh, progressives, that will never happen. And the reason it will never happen is because you look at all of this capital flight and population flight and businesses leaving these blue states, you think, my God, it's a catastrophe. And you realize, no, 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 no. That's not a bug. That's a feature for these people. They want to live in a society that is a that is a binary society, where there are the small number of rich aristocrats and everyone else is a, is a serf. That's what they want. And so the people that are leaving these states are middle class people, and they're taking middle class businesses with them. The people who are making these decisions are so rich that they, they whatever taxes they end up paying after their you know top level accountants are finished. There's no real skin off their nose, and the people who are really, really on the low end aren't paying much taxes anyway, so they're they're stuck here. And the people that are leaving these blue states are are the middle class businesses, and and there's no other way to explain it, Steve. I spent I spent ten years trying to figure out when California would wake up to the fact that they are kicking their tax base out of the state, until suddenly I finally just dawned on me, like some other dim child who, who suddenly just wakes up to realize I've been pushing the door on the Midvale School for the Gifted, you know, when it says pull on it. I, I finally, I, I finally just realized, no, this is the, this is the, this is the intent. This is the, this is the, the objective. I had thought for the longest time, we talked about this for a long, long time, certainly since the PJTV days, that people fleeing states like California and the others and going to Texas would be turning those states bluer. But I actually had a chance to talk with Jeremy about this, and, and they did a, a fair amount of research on this with Daily Wire. Turns out that the people who are leaving California and going to Texas are actually redder than the than the native Texans. Amen. Yeah. That the that the that it's the people that are leaving these states too. are conservatives. They're just they're just leaving. They can't take it anymore. And um and so so it's kind of like a centrifuge. It's separating the blood platelets out from the plasma, you know. And and the and Scott was right. The faster this thing spins, the the quicker this thing's going to happen. So the Democrats are going to get what they want in these states. They're going to have a a, a a ruin in terms of public works. The roads here are beyond belief. They're Mogadishu, and and the roads in Florida are magnificent. I was just there a couple months ago. Um, so there's that. I think what's actually more important than this is not not so much the money that they're taking with them. But I, I think the thing I find most interesting is how many electoral votes are they taking with them to Florida or Texas? Because in the long run, that's what I suspect is going to happen. We picked up a seat here. California, yeah. California will continue to lose people and get bluer and bluer, more and more toxic, more and more people will flee. That's, you know, that's that. And, 
as they flee, their number of electoral votes will go down. And as uh, Texas and, and Florida, which are well-governed states, receive more and more citizens, their number of electoral votes would go up. I wish this kind of thing happened every two years instead of every 10. Nevertheless, you know, there you go, or every four anyway. So, you know, there's that. Um, so, you know, it, it's just common sense. And, and, and really, Steve, if you think about it, what we're seeing here is kind of a microcosm of what America was in the first place. It was a place where people who were in, in you know, who, who grew up in a neighborhood in, in, in Russia or in England or Scotland or, or wherever, and they decide to leave everything that they know and their families and their friends and their schools and all of that and pack up and go someplace where it's better where it's going to be better. That actually takes a fair amount of guts to pack up and move. Scott will tell you that. It's not yeah. an easy thing to do to just leave your state and go someplace else. The entire country was self-selected for that kind of risk-taking. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing this in microcosm. The real Americans who, who, who weren't going to put up with the fact that the czar or the king or whatever were taking their scrawny potatoes left and just got on a ship and just went someplace where they wouldn't. And now those descendants are saying, I'm tired of $800 haircut taken, you know, 30% of my money on top of the other percent of the money that they're taking. So screw you, Gavin Newsom, you don't cast a reflection and, and, I'm, and I'm going to Texas. Now, of course, this always brings up the same issue and that is what am I still doing here? Uh, and the answer is I, I spent 25 years in Florida and uh, and I was back there a couple months ago and, I, and, 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 and everything is working, everything's clean, everything's wonderful. It's a well-run state, it's a free state. I remember going to Florida during the pandemic and nobody had masks on and everybody was just out in a restaurant having a fine time and I came back to California and all the lockdowns, all this crap. However, I noticed when I was back there six months or four or five months ago that when I got off the airplane, I could start to feel it. And by the time I was outside waiting for my friend to pick me up, I could already discern that there was a thin skill, a, a, a thin film of algae forming on my entire body, and 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 yeah. that and that and that I could feel it. I could feel the little tendrils of of of, of green moisture and and humidity oh, starting to attach itself to my pores, and uh, and my hair was screaming. You know, I, I had to take an entire suitcase just to hair products, just 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 that alone. So, right now, I'm paying a high humidity tax. Uh, let me rephrase that. I'm paying a high anti-humidity tax here. Um, but the, the great tragedy, of course, is, is, that, is that California, as an example, and New York as well, at the turn, in, the, in the middle of the last century, New York and California were the financial and entertainment centers of the world. New York and California were essentially defining what the American experience was, at least big city America. And now both of them have become unlivable, unmanageable, and so on. And um, and and the reason is Democrats. Steve, can the I throw in one Democrats. more thing here? Uh, Please. One of the things that I've noticed, and this is, I don't have data on this. I, I just have anecdotal personal experience that when I ask people from California why they came to Texas, um, I don't know if it's this way in Florida because Florida is much more of a retirement haven, but I'll bet you nine times out of 10, people tell me they came to Texas so they could be near their kids and their grandkids. In other words, mm. there is a flow of youth to Texas. Young people are moving here for opportunity to start their own businesses or to work for a big That's... tech firm or, or you know, Toyota's North American headquarters, for example. Um, and the old people are leaving states like California so that they can be near where their kids and their grandkids are. You know, Scott, you just reminded me of one of the saddest things I've ever read. I can't remember who wrote this, but it was an observation about New York City that I read several years ago, 10 years ago maybe. It said New York used to be where New York City used to be where young ambitious people would go to make it. And now it's a place where millionaires and billionaires who have already made it buy a weekend condo to do their shopping on 5th Avenue. <laughs> I just like to add something too. You know, it's the, the, one of the actually the hardest parts about moving from California anywhere uh, would be, you know, trying to tell people you're from California. Reminds me about this joke I remember hearing about this uh, this uh, man who got a call from his son. I mean, got a call from his teacher saying that when they were asking about, uh, you know, you know, what do your parents do in 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 uh, class one day, and this kid said, "Well, my dad's a, a towel boy at a gay bathhouse." 
and and the teacher called the father and said, "My God, you are are you a, are you really a, you know a, a towel boy at a gay bathhouse?" And the guy said, "No, I'm a, I'm an attorney, but I can't have my kid telling that to everybody." You know, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know that, that that's kind of it. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from. I'm, I'm going to have to decompress. Go from Florida to Nevada. Nevada tags for six months. Nevada tags to Utah. <laughs> Utah tags to maybe Tennessee. Tennessee to Florida or Texas. You know, uh, when I moved here, when I moved to Colorado from California almost 30 years ago, it was 1994, I used to tell people that I moved here from Oregon to escape all the Californians. And that way people would take pity on me. Oh, dude, they're here too. Instead of saying, oh, you're a Californian. Those, when, when I got out here, there were bumper stickers everywhere that said, don't Californicate Oregon. Well, it turns out that they did. Yes, they did. And, um, and now uh, here we are. Indeed, um, you know. Let, let me let me finish with uh, a little little more something about California. Because Bill's right; it's it's turning into a, a third world country with the, the tiny bit at the top and everybody else at the at the big wide bottom, um, with the middle class just getting squeezed out of existence, or at least squeezed out into Texas and Florida and other states. Um, when I left San Francisco in in 1994, the writing was on the wall. I loved that city. It was it was. It, it was beautiful and weird. It's still weird, but the weirdness has overcome the beauty now, and it's just, I, I won't even visit anymore. Um, but what's keeping California afloat are really two things. The entertainment industry in Los Angeles and Silicon Valley in the Bay Area generate the revenues that keep the state functioning. That the keep, California has about one in nine Americans and one in three welfare cases. That money's got to come from somewhere. And as I said, it comes from the Bay Area. It comes from Los Angeles. Well, Los Angeles is in the middle of a writer strike and an actor strike that is probably going to last a year at a minimum, creating opportunities for, for upstart entertainment companies that don't have the union hassles to, to produce the entertainment that Americans want to watch. It'll end up on on the internet, not in the movie theater. It'll end up on Netflix, not in the movie theater, on on broadcast TV or or, or the streaming services like Peacock. And the and the Bay Area, that's that's the crown jewel. Well, Apple, Google, Facebook, excuse me, Meta now, they're never gonna leave the Bay Area. Their 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 people are there, their their infrastructure is there. But I'm pretty sure of this. The company that uh, that outcompetes Meta and, and 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 puts them out of business isn't going to f- come from California. It's going to come from Texas. The company that that puts Apple in the ground, same thing. The company that replaces Google, again, it's going to come from Texas, from from Florida, from North Carolina. It's not going to come from California. And when that crown jewel in the Bay Area withers and dies, that's when California goes from a third world state to a failed state. And it's going to be a real tragedy. Hate to see it. All right. That's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. We wouldn't need but 15 guys with AR-15s to retake the state. We wouldn't even have to fire them. Just walk down the street with them over our shoulder. Hey. That's pretty much do it. <laughs>